I'm going to demonstrate a really good and easy solution for automatically transferring your data like photos from your phone to a computer. This can all be automatic, so if you set it up for your family, there's no special action required. In fact, once the app is installed, it pretty much runs on its own. This requires a little bit of tech skills to install, which I will try to show today, but it's not bad. The reason I want to encourage you to come up with a solution for backing up photos and files from your phone automatically is so that you stop using the bad cloud services like Google Photos, Google Drive, Google Docs, iCloud, and any other cloud platform. This allows you to keep your data on your own home devices with no one else spying on your content and doing things like facial recognition as they do on Google Photos, iCloud, and Facebook. The app we will use to achieve this is called SyncThing. SyncThing is an open source project, so that is the first big plus to this solution, and it's all free. Also, it works on Android, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. I will demonstrate how you can sync your phone photos from a Brax2 Android phone onto a Linux computer and a Windows computer. This way you can learn to back up from Android to either a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or both. I'm not demonstrating a Mac OS computer, but you can do that as well. You can use SyncThing also to back up any folder automatically from one computer to another computer, but I will specifically demonstrate the use to back up the photos from the phone automatically and hands-free. Stay right there. I'm on the platform odyssey.com. I'm now a top creator on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company sells privacy products like Bytes VPN, a metadata free email, Brax Mail, and our new product is the Brax2 privacy phone that can shield you from Google and others. Brax2 is now available on Amazon and also on my app Brax.me. The links are in the description. The first thing we're going to do is install SyncThing on your Android phone. For this video, I'm using a Brax2 privacy phone, which is a degoogled Android. Let me show you the photos that are in my phone's photo gallery. Our task today is to ensure that these photos are synced to my laptop running Linux and another laptop running Windows 11. On our Android phone, I can install SyncThing from the Google Play Store. However, I don't have Google on a Brax2 phone, so instead we have the Aurora Store. This is a Google Play spoofer, so all the apps are the same as in the Google Play Store, except you download it without a Google ID. You can see the SyncThing app here on the Aurora Store. However, SyncThing happens to also be on an even safer store, which is F-Droid. In fact, it is featured on the very front page of F-Droid Store, so I don't even have to search for it. Let's begin the install from F-Droid. I'll give it all the permissions for this demo, but I can't imagine why you would need location permissions. Battery optimization, if disabled, will allow the phone to run the app in the background. And I will disable optimizations here. But for normal use, I can't imagine photos having to be synced that quickly. A few times a day is good enough. So I might think this to be unnecessary. Up to you. By default, Sync thing automatically adds the camera folder, which on Android is the DCIM folder. I did not add this. This is something automatic on the SyncThing Android app. 
so you don't even have to set up the folder that will be shared. Let's pause on the Android installation and get the other computer set up first. Next, we will set up a Windows computer. On Windows, we'll search for SyncThing. This should lead us to the SyncThing homepage. Now go to the download section and you should see a link to the Windows version called Sync Tracer. Go to the list of files and download Sync Tracer Setup x64.exe. After downloading, I'm just going to click on the executable, which I'll find in my downloads folder on the computer and accept all the default settings. And I will also automatically launch the SyncThing app after the installation. On the launched app, I will not set up a username and password. I will recommend that you use this in actual use for extra security. I'm selecting no for anonymous usage reporting. So even by installing SyncThing, nothing actually happens yet. Devices have to be matched to each other and folders have to be shared to authorize devices. But I will get back to this after the install on all other devices. I will leave this on the show ID page, which has the QR code that we will use later. Just remember where we end this. Next, we will install on Linux. For Linux, we go to the same SyncThing site. This time you can read the instructions for your particular Linux distro. Here are instructions for installing SyncThing on Debian or Ubuntu systems. However, I'm using Pop! OS and I don't have to install it using the command line. I'm just going to use the Pop! OS store and search for SyncThing. You will see three applications, SyncThing GTK, SyncThing Web UI, and SyncThingy. It's important to install the first two. The SyncThingy is optional. After you install the first two apps, you will see apps called Start SyncThing. This will run a SyncThing service which will run in the background continuously. The SyncThing Web UI is the primary way you would want to interact with the SyncThing service. For now, let's leave this app also to the show ID page and this will be matched and this will be used to match these computers to the phone. The easiest way to connect all these devices together is through the mobile device, which we will do next. Now let's go back to the SyncThing app on Android. The first thing you have to do is add devices to each app. We have two computers to add. To add a device, Tap on the devices and then the plus sign. This will display the add device window. Now instead of doing a complicated manual typing of a device ID, all you do is tap on the QR code icon on the top right. Then point the phone to the QR code in the show ID that we left the screens on earlier for each of the computers. And this will automatically populate the screen and allow you to add the device. Now we will repeat the step on the second device. After this step, you will then see both devices listed 
under the devices tab last step on android we go to the folder we are sharing which on android is the camera folder or dcim from the camera app all the devices you can share are shown there and two of them are listed to share this folder to those devices just flip the switch as shown here and that's it on the android device now let me show you what happens on the linux computer and by the way the same thing will happen to the windows computer so i will not repeat it on windows you will see the new device alert and all you have to do is acknowledge with add device Then next, it will give the confirmation that a folder will be shared to you. In this case, we're only sharing the phone's camera folder. You have the option to rename the shared folder so it's clear what it is. Then hit save. You will then see the devices and shares on the status page. Shortly after, the sync of the folders will occur. And now if we look at the home folder on the Linux computer, you will see the camera folder that has been shared and the images are exactly what is on your phone. Now some other details here. The way SyncThings finds each device is that they all report their IP address and port to a centralized SyncThing community server. This means this can work even over the internet. It doesn't have to occur just on your home network. This increases the usability of the Sync to behave similarly to a cloud service. And don't worry, the actual data transfer is done using TLS, so your photos are not visible to the community server. They just serve to allow devices to find each other. Devices talk to each other directly. Also remember, this is open source and popular enough that security issues should be easily resolved if found. SigThing is a great cloudless solution and used in a family setting it weans your family away from using Google Drive and iCloud, which are both unsafe options. It is also a free service, which is fantastic. Enjoy. Thanks for watching and see you next time.